Hello everyone. I would like to first of all just apologize. We did a little live tasting with cheese educator Debbie Levy earlier and we had a little bit of an internet connection issue. So I'm just going to do another recap for any of you viewers that wanted to go ahead and taste this weekend. So we will post all of Debbie's amazing cheese notes after online with this video so that you can follow along and I'll talk about the wine and the cheese combinations right now. And again, I apologize for our technical um, difficulties. So let's get tasting some wine and cheese. So we have recommended that we, we have four different wines uh, just so you can get set up. We have a sparkling. I chose uh, 13 straight Blanc de Noir, 100% Gamay, a Sauv Blanc, uh, 13 straight Sauv Blanc. And I chose our, our Gamay, our 2018 Gamay, and our brand new release 2018 Cab Franc that is unoaked. And the cheeses that we chose, we chose uh, Bridget's Brie, um, Blooming Rind uh, Brie style from Guns Hill. And then a goat's cheese, just a soft, creamy goat's cheese. I have my cheese plate already here, so you can see, um, to go with a salt block. Then we chose Handak um, from Guns Hill, which is a Swiss Alpine style. Um, you can also use Guerriere with the uh, Gamay. And then we also have a white cheddar and a Celtic blue um, to go with the Cab Franc. Now, the white cheddar is from Cow's Creamery and it's two years old. The Celtic blue is from Glen Gary and it's from Lancaster and it's award winning and that's going with the Cab Franc. I also recommended some spiced walnuts and um, I have a few recipes to share with you as well and we'll do that at the end. But let's start with number one. So first wine is the Blanc de Noir. And this is, this is my favorite sparkling. I really love this, this wine, 100% uh, uh, Gamay. You really get to taste the versatility of Gamay. I also get tons of um, tart cherry, a little bit of fresh dough, and um, a little bit of spice on this one, on the aroma. Um, I get um, maraschino cherries and almonds. Really nice pairing, um, sparkling. You don't need to have a special occasion. Goes with almost everything, when in doubt, pear sparkling. And it's really great with any kind of blooming rind cheeses, especially if you have double cream or triple cream cheese. So with the Guns Hill, this one, if you try it with, with the cheese, you actually get a lot more of the um, cherry um, and almond biscotti note comes out with the sparkling wine. You get a little bit of a cherry pie finish tons of fruit in the wine comes out and the cheese becomes really buttery and creamy on the finish and um, what's happening here we're going to actually use a contrast um, with this so you can also pair a really creamy buttery oak date chardonnay uh, we have a brand new uh, beef check going to be released soon that is in your wine club shipments for you wine club members and that would be a great pairing with the bridget spree but in which the fats and the creaminess and the weight of the Chardonnay marry with the weight of the cheese. But what we're doing with the sparkling is we're gonna do contrast. So we're gonna go opposite. So all the acidity and the sparkling and the bubbles is gonna cut through the richness and the fat of the cheese. And it's gonna bring the wine to life, even more fruit, and the cheese is gonna become even more creamy, but it's gonna be balanced. And it's actually acting as a palate cleanser. So great pairing. Definitely try this uh, Blanc de Noir and uh, it's something special. It's brand new for us this last year, so highly recommended. I, I love it and it's definitely a nice treat this summer when on a nice hot day with, it, with the cheese board. Wine number two, we're gonna go into our Salt Blanc. And the Salt Blanc is something that is also uh, newly released. You really get some fresh cut grass, herbaceous uh, note and some white grapefruit. That's my bottle of sub block. And this one, it's nice and tart and dry. It's such a perfect pairing, classic pairing with uh, goat cheese. And I just recommended just the classic plain goat cheese you get from, from soft goat cheese you get from, from the store. Um, just easy, you, you can uh, get that at any grocery store locally. 
when you taste this one, you really get some lemon peel, uh, white grapefruit, some pineapple note, and a little bit of jalapeno. When you try it with the ghost cheese, what's gonna happen is ghost cheese, because it has that tang and that little bit of lactic and acidity on the finish of, of the cheese, the uh, Sauv Blanc marries with that because it also has lots of acidity and tang on the finish. So the acidity marries with the acidity, both wine and cheese, and kind of evens each other out. So less acid comes out in the wine and the cheese. The cheese becomes very creamy, uh, really nice long finish, and the wine has more fruit. So less herbaceous notes, a lot more really ripe pineapple, and the white grapefruit turns more to a pink grapefruit. And you still get a little bit of that jalapeno note, which is really nice, but it the, together, it's a really great, pairing. So you can have this um, on a hot day again this summer. Right now being asparagus season, this is great if you grill some asparagus on, put some salt and pepper, and then finish with a little bit of fresh goat cheese on top. Great pairing with the Sauv Blanc. So this one is available in um, at the wine bar, um, in, in the winery, and online, and in the bakery. It's $19.95. So let's go to wine number three. Make sure you don't lose track. So this next one is our Gamay. And something really exciting is the Gamay is $2 off for most of June. So it brings it down to $17.95. So this is a great chance to uh, purchase the Gamay. Plus um, any of you that are um, Wine Club members that are getting their shipment, if you would like to me to add this to your shipment, just email me and let me know. It's no problem. And you can still get the, the um, special rate on that. So Gamay, we are a, a Gamay producer and Gamay is so versatile and uh, I always call it as a sommelier my secret weapon because it goes with cheese and charcuterie and when doubt again it goes with so many different foods, very versatile. Um, we chose this um, Swiss Alpine style cheese which is hand deck. Um, this is from Guns Hill. It's uh, really nutty and creamy. And um, Debbie, when she was recommending trying this, she was shaving it off really thin and trying it. And then she also took a nice thick bite of it because she said that it changes a little bit on your palate. And when you're pairing wine and uh, cheese together, you always wanna try a little bit of the wine first, kind of cleanse your palate and then try the cheese and take your time, slow down and relax, enjoy the experience, let the cheese melt in your mouth and become really creamy and then finish with the wine because you'll notice that the weight and the acidity and the finish of the wine changes a little bit of the cheese plus the wine changes. So any tannins or spice you have in the wine completely disappear and uh, the wine will become more fruity. The cheese will probably become more creamy or nutty. It's a really nice combination. So enjoy and try all the different cheeses and wines that you have um, at different, different times because each one will be different. But, so this Gamay, tons of raspberry, black cherry, um, licorice and spice, and uh, I got lots of black pepper on the finish of the palate of this one. And when I try this with the hand deck, it does become very nutty on the finish. And the cheese has tons of warm spice come through, lots of acidity. It's uh, great chilled in the summer, and you get a little bit of that black pepper on, on, the, on the back, on the contrast of it. Um, I really, really love this Gamay as my little everyday wine. So I am stocking up as well with the Gamay. Great summer wine. Now we'll go to wine number four. So our next wine, again, newly released this summer is our Cap Franc 2018. So this one, um, I really love this one because it's unoaked. So you actually really get to actually taste the Cap Franc raw, what Cap Franc actually tastes, tastes like without um, any oak aging afterwards. So we do a little bit of a longer skin contact with this one for three weeks in, and then we uh, keep it in a stainless steel tank. And you're really gonna get um, a little bit of licorice, tons of blueberry and currant notes, um, lots of pepper on the finish, and a nice long finish with this one. Um, easy drinking, and you can lightly chill this one again in the summer. It's not gonna, not gonna hurt it, but it's really food friendly, and uh, I get a little bit of smoke, so anything you're barbecuing this summer is gonna be great with the Cab Franc. And we're gonna pair two cheeses with this one. So I recommended a white cheddar. I chose a two-year-old white cheddar that is um, from Cow's Creamery. And this one has, you can, you can kind of see uh, 
get a little closer. Lots of salty crystals happening in it, and it has a uh, little bit of salty crystal crunch to it when you're when you're trying it. So with this one, um, salt loves wine, or I should say, wine loves salt. And it actually bring, it's gonna bring up more fruit in the wine. The cheese is gonna be really creamy on the finish. And uh, this one is going to have um, lots of blueberry notes on it. And you're gonna get a little bit of the cinnamon flavor come out on the finish of the Cab Franc. All the tannins in the Cab Franc soften up and it's just, it's enjoyable. The next cheese is our Celtic Blue. This is my favorite cheese that we carry at 13th Street. I love blue cheese. It's probably my favorite food. Uh, I could eat it for breakfast, lunch, and dinner, and for snacks. Um, it's the Celtic Blue. It's dangerous. This one is not a really sharp uh, Celtic Blue. It's perfect for uh, blue cheese um, people, like anyone that wants to try and enter into blue cheese because it's not, it doesn't have that really heavy blue cheese. It's more creamy and buttery and nutty. And, um, I, this, this particular blue cheese, we sell it at the 13th Street Bakery, but any of you that are getting in your shipment, the Vichec Chardonnay for Wine Club members, it is such a unique, different pairing. It actually, you don't ever pair blue cheese with Chardonnay, but because um, this one's a bit more nutty and creamy, it's a perfect match with, with the Vichec Chardonnay. It actually brings out more of a caramelized nutty finish in the wine and um, you get like a butterscotch snow and vanilla on the finish of the Vichec Chard and the cheese becomes really creamy and nutty. Great pairing. But since we don't have that one with us today, we are doing with the Cab Franc. The Cab Franc actually has a bit more like chocolate and uh, cinnamon and spice come through, tons of blueberry notes, a little bit of currants, and a bit of a dry throat, get a little sip of wine. Um, excellent pairing. And together, um, this it really actually softens some of the tannins in the Cab Franc. Any of you that are grilling any kind of um, steaks this summer, I always smear um, the Celtic Blue and crumble it on top of my steak and then enjoy it with some Cab Franc. So it's a nice pairing. With this pairing, I actually also suggested that you make uh, some nuts. So um, spiced walnuts, it's a cocoa and cinnamon spiced walnut. The recipe will post after, but um, the little bit of the chocolate and the cinnamon complement the flavors in a Cab Franc and bring up more chocolatey notes in the wine. And it's really easy to do. You have um, a little bit of butter and some maple syrup and some cinnamon, some little bit of cayenne, some cocoa powder, some salt, um, mix them together, and then um, just bake them in the oven about 350, uh, for about 10 minutes, and then you wanna um, stir them up and then flip it and then do it again. This little fly that's buzzing around. Mm -hmm. um, and then uh, you can serve them um, with, you can put them on top of salads or with your cheese and charcuterie boards and wine, really great. Um, pairing. Also, um, I'm going to post another recipe of, uh, this is Debbie's from five years ago. Her and I did a seminar on property and it was at Christmas time around then and she made um, for holiday entertaining a uh, chocolate graham cracker, um, which it's really easy to make. It's basically graham cracker crumbs, um, dark chocolate and sea salt and you melt the dark chocolate and then you mix it in with the graham crackers and then with some salt, you roll it out on a baking sheet and chill it with some parchment paper in the fridge for an hour. And that actually um, becomes like a, like a cracker um, and it's perfect with, with blue cheese. Really great um, pairing. And what's gonna happen with that is you have more, lots more currants and blackberry and raspberry jam come out in the Cab Franc and chocolate flavors come out but it complements the blue cheese. So blue cheese and uh, chocolate and red wine, amazing combination. I highly recommend it. And again, it's one of those ones that once you try it once, you're gonna be addicted. And even if you have it with a little bit of nuts, that's a great pairing. Um, I also recommended some Gamay jelly. Gamay jelly will be great with both the Cab Franc and the Gamay, um, both um, bring out lots of the jammy, uh, seeded berry flavors in both the wines. So again, we'll post all these recipes right after so that you can um, do this again on your own. And I have one more recipe for you. So this next one, because um, it's, it's um, 
uh, backyard grillings time and we all want to be outside, this is a halloumi, a marinated halloumi recipe. Really easy. Uh, we Something about cheese and the barbecue, just it's just delicious and it just makes you want to sit in the backyard, open a bottle of wine. This one's a perfect pairing with the gamay because I, I really love the gamay lightly chilled in the summer, especially on a hot day. So basically, um, the oranges, the recipe will be posted, but you want to grill the oranges and then set them aside, let them cool. I took a little bit of fresh olive oil, a little bit of chili flakes, some fresh thyme, and um, you marinate the halloumi with some Kalamata of olives, and then for about an hour or two. And then uh, I actually put this in a cast iron pan and seared it, but you can grill it in the barbecue, whatever you prefer. And then just garnish it with some more of the oranges and the Kalamata of olives and some thyme springs on top. And it's a perfect pairing with the gamay with um, Kalamata of olives. If you lightly heat them and saute them with a little bit of orange zest and orange, it actually brings out a lot more of, of a really nice flavor in the Kalamata of olive and it helps pair even better with red wine. So it brings out a lot more of warm spice and fruit in the gamay and you get a little bit more of mushroom earthy note with it. Really interesting pairing. It's one of my favorite go-to late night snacks. So you can also just saute the Kalamata of olives with some orange zest and throw a little splash of the um, orange in afterwards of the juice. And uh, you don't need to salt, um, but a little black pepper is great with it as well. So this is a great, great pairing and we'll post that afterwards. So just to have a little bit of a recap of the, of the wines. So Blanc de Noir, Sauvignon Blanc, Gamay, and Cab Franc, um, all available now at 13th Street Winery and um, stay tuned for all the recipes and some a lot more really fun uh, live virtual tastings to come. Cheers, everyone.